What is going on everybody? This is Tatro and today is an exciting day because we get to unbox, unwrap a brand new MIDI controller. Today we are going to be checking out Off Grid by a small company called Bird Kids. Now I actually backed this controller on Kickstarter maybe a couple years ago and then totally forgot about it and look it suddenly showed up in the mail. So today I'm gonna to give you my thoughts on the controller, but I don't wanna to do too much talking right here at the front. So let's actually take this thing for a spin and I hope you enjoy my first beat on the off grid. Alright, so I hope you did enjoy that little performance demo here with the off grid. I just wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about my thoughts on the controller and maybe compare it to a couple of controllers you've seen me use in the past. First of all, the design of the off grid is beautiful. It's super slim. The colorways that it comes in, obviously this is the white one, but the colorways that it comes in are beautiful as well. Very simple, minimalistic design, and I love that. Uh, simple USB port on the top. Little tiny speaker on the back. When it's not connected, you can actually like play notes and it sounds like a little chip tuny. So here's what it sounds like. I forgot to do a sound test in the actual video. Can you hear that? Uh, the nice little feet help keep it stable when it's down on the table. And of course the backlit lights are a nice touch as well. In that demo, I was using it in sort of like a chromatic mode to play Ableton's drum rack. So it's just like starting on C1 and then C sharp, etc., up the notes. But you can of course change the scale and change the starting note by going into the, some of these sub menus. So you can see as I scroll through here, you see the lights changing arrangements. Some of you might recognize those as different types of scales and modes um, that you can play in. Because of course, I was only using it as a drum rack. However, it can of course be used to control synths and play notes. So having access to those scales is really nice and useful. These two buttons here end up functioning as octave buttons. And one thing I did during that performance is actually use this red button here. I MIDI mapped it, so that's nice that there's a couple buttons that are MIDI mappable. Obviously, you don't want to map the octave buttons or else you won't be able to change octaves. Um, but map the red button to just turn the kick on and off. So that was really useful. And it's got one of these XY joysticks, which I'm not a fan of these. The Akai MPK Mini has a joystick as well, though I love the low profile design of this one. That is a for sure design improvement as opposed to some of the joysticks that Akai uses, as you can see that juts off quite a bit and makes it quite annoying for putting it in a bag or something, but this one's nice and slim, as this is like a straight up pocketable device. But the reason I don't love these, and you know, it could be just a matter of me finding the right effects to use with them, is that when you're either controlling the Y axis or the X axis, it is nearly impossible to not trigger both at the same time. Now, chaos pads work in this way, right? Like if you've ever seen a chaos pad, you know it's just like this big square that you're meant to control X and Y at the same time. 
But when I'm doing things like especially in this performance where I just want to control a filter or something, but then I want to fully utilize it. So I want to put something else on the other axis. So I put a little delay. It, it always crosses streams. So that's just a, a personal issue for me. I can probably just find better effects to utilize with it. But you are limited in having an XY uh, joystick in sort of the type of effects you can accomplish. The kind of effects that I used, it's kind of annoying to set up and not accidentally trigger the wrong effect. The other thing though here is we can tilt the off grid. So we can tilt left and right and we can also tilt back and forward. So like kind of another X, Y axis there. And that I really like, I love doing motion controls like that, which is why I wanted to compare it to a couple controllers you've seen me use before. Cause maybe you'll be interested in a similar type of controller. Uh, first on that note of like tilting back and forth, I've got the MIDI fighter 3d. Now there's a lot of differences between these two controllers, obviously, but actually, uh, they're quite similar. So of course we have the four by four grid, and then this is the MIDI Fighter 3D, which means we can also do the tilting motion. I'll put a video at the top that you can watch this in action in a very similar way. I set up very similar sets um, with the MIDI Fighter 3D. This one does have some buttons on the side as well as some buttons on top so we can change pages. And it is not Bluetooth. It is only USB. So one up for the off grid. Of course, the other big difference is these are arcade style buttons very loud but but very tactile and very satisfying obviously the off-grid are these more firm pads obviously this is not pocketable off-grid very pocketable not only is this not pocketable but it's kind of annoying to put in a bag as well because not only is it a thick boy but it's also got these feet on it that stick out a lot as well but i still love the midi fighter i this was one of the first midi controllers i always always wanted aspirationally and then another close comparison here is the Orba. So these are similar in that they're both extremely, extremely portable. Now, I don't think you're putting the, you could put the Orba in your pocket, I guess, if you have big pockets, maybe some cargo pants, just by virtue of it being this uh, kind of circular global or half a globe. I don't even know what to call it. Um, but yeah, you've got, instead of a grid though, you have eight uh, capacitive touch slices of the pie here and they are capacitive touch. And when I say capacitive touch, I mean, it's kind of like a touch screen, like it's hard plastic. It's not a pad that you push, but you can still get velocity sensitivity from it. There's also some MPE qualities to it as well. And you can hold down a note and use tilt to change the sound. Now I mentioned that the off grid does have like a built-in sound when it's not really connected to anything, um, but the Orba is actually a full on synth where it actually has lead, chord, bass, and drums built right in, and you can change the sounds or whatever sound set is on the Orba uh, from the desktop app. You can also like loop and sequence on the Orba, but I don't think those capabilities are quite there yet. And there is a speaker on the bottom, so you can literally just play out loud, switching between the modes. And that's really nice. So Orba wins, especially in the realm of being a standalone synth. This is obviously not that, um, but in terms of portability, off-grid still has a little bit of the edge. And in terms of like just being a more traditional interface, off-grid has the edge there as well. Doesn't mean you can't get creative and have a lot of fun with the Orba, because I do. And I'll put a video at the top so you can see me using this in action if you haven't yet. I wanna quickly also mention that you can connect the off-grid via Bluetooth MIDI to apps that have that functionality. So this is really, really useful. This is just an app called Groovebox by, um, Amplify, which is sort of an offshoot of Novation, I guess, but full on synth control here, as well as drums. Yeah, so if you can imagine your setup, instead of bringing a backpack with a laptop, you can use your favorite, you know, Bluetooth MIDI apps. You don't even need any cords, probably just a headphone jack so you don't annoy everybody in the cafe. And then like your setup literally just fits in your pocket. I mean, look at that compared to the iPhone. This is iPhone 13 Pro Max. For reference, we love a pocketable setup.
So I love the off-grid. One thing that ends up happening on this channel is I end up reviewing a lot of MIDI controllers that are made by some of the biggest companies out there, Akai, Novation, Archuria, and they're all great at making controllers, but I think what ultimately happens is um, innovation starts to go away. If you think of the three main mini MIDI controllers I just mentioned from Novation, Akai, and Archuria, they all start to look the same. But these controllers here, that are from kind of smaller companies um, that are really trying to push the envelope and do something different. This is what really gets me excited about controllerism. The individual little features, the different nature of working with them, the ideas that I can point you towards, the way you can take them on the go, you know? Like, it's all very exciting. That's why I love controllerism in general, and I feel like a lot of the bigger companies are just getting more and more homogenized and becoming more similar to each other. So, Bird Kids creating something new, being a smaller company, paying attention to design, thinking about the end consumer, just throwing this in their pocket and heading to a coffee shop, or just always having it on them potentially. I think that's really cool and I wanna see more of that in this space. So comment down below, let me know what you think of the off-grid. I will leave a link in the description to the site so you can get more information about it. Don't ask me about Android, don't ask me about PC. I don't know, go to the website. This was not a sponsored video, but I love MIDI controllers and I backed this on Kickstarter a long, long time ago, completely forgot about it and it finally came in the mail. So I just wanted to show it off because I thought you all might like it. Anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see me do more with the off-grid, let me know that in a comment as well, but I might work with it on a future live stream coming up, so stay tuned for that. Give the video a like, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on, and thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.